how to make this year the best year ever in your real estate business. Run your real estate business as if it were a real business. I'm hoping you're writing this stuff down. The reason why that's such an important question is so many agents don't run the real estate business like a real business. They don't have a P&L. They don't know how much money they're spending. They're not punching the clock. They don't have a set schedule. They don't have a training program. They don't have accountability. They don't have mentors and coaches. They don't treat their customers like gold. Think about all those things that I just said. I hope, hopefully you're writing all that stuff down. And one of the, the, the big reasons why this is such an important question to make this year better, the best year in real estate ever, is because all of these impact you on a daily basis. All of these impact your business because it's your mindset and it's knowing what to do and having the support in order to do it, okay? So how does a real business operate? Well, all the things that I just listed is how a real estate sales business operates if you're gonna operate a high level and be very successful in the industry, okay? Next question I want you to write down, how do I find customers? How do I find more customers? Maybe you're closing five to 10 deals a year and you don't have internet leads coming through the door, you're not doing open houses, you're not prospecting FISBOs and expired, you're not circle dialing, you're not in a BNI group or one of those networking groups, you're, you're not communicating with anybody, you're playing on Facebook and Instagram and watching YouTube videos, um, or maybe you're just watching Netflix and chilling. Well, when you understand how a real business operates and your number one goal every single day is to find new customers to work with, then that's when you're gonna shift over to start increasing the, the business that, that you're doing. All right, next thing I want you to write down, what service do these other businesses offer? Well, they're offering a set schedule. Hey, these are my hours of operation. They're offering services and the customer typically knows what to expect. They're offering great marketing and a great experience. What they're not offering, offering is a bunch of gossip, a bunch of nonsense out there. They're strictly selling their service or product and the customers know what they're going to get. That's how real businesses operate. Now, when you figure all of this out, and you're like, man, I'm operating pretty well. I need to add this, 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 and this. Then I want you to write down, how do I improve the service that I offer? Every single aspect of it. How do I improve the service that I offer? It's a very important question. All right, next question I want you to write down is we have to learn how to initiate change and stop reacting to the change. So how do I stop reacting to change? And how do I initiate change? So if I know something's not going right in my business, then I have to say, wait a minute, stop. I've got to move forward this direction. I'm, and I'm going to move forward today, right now. That's how we're going to initiate change. In the past, and myself included, I would say, yeah, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm gonna write this down. I'm gonna put it on the shelf. I'm gonna think about it. And I already knew the answer. I already knew that I needed to make the change today, but I didn't because I had some type of fear. Some, what are people gonna say? What am I gonna feel like if I make this change? Am I gonna overcommit? Well, if you're growing a business, we're supposed to serve our businesses at the highest level and serve our customers at the highest level. There's two people we're serving. We're not just serving ourselves as the business owners and business leaders. We have to serve the business and the, ser the, the business needs to initiate change. It's part of leadership when you're running your own business. Okay, so I want you to um, also think about this 
topic when you're a listing agent. This is for all my listing agents out there. And if you're not a listing agent, you're a buyer's agent, I want you to start thinking about becoming a listing agent. I want you to be a listing agent. You can list to last, right? Think about that, list to last. You can control the market with listings. You are the employer, not the employee, when you're going after listings and you have a listing to offer to the marketplace. Your commissions are protected because you have an agreement. You have a contract with the seller offering you compensation to bring them a buyer. There's less stress when you're selling listings rather than having to go out there and try to figure out what the buyers want. It's much easier of a business when you go after listings. So um, next, I want you to write down, if you need the deal more than the seller wants to give it to you, you're already at a loss. You probably didn't pre-qualify, number one, but sometimes we go on those listing presentations and that seller, when you're sitting in front of them, is judging you. They're judging you based off of what you say and how you're presenting yourself. So if they're not wanting to list their home with you, there's something wrong with what you're saying and maybe the appearance or something there because it's not attractive enough in order to get them excited to sign a contract with you. So those are little tips that you can try to figure out if you're going on listing presentations and you're not getting listings, there's something wrong with part of that presentation. It could be the clothes that you're wearing, it could be what you're saying, what you're not saying. It, it probably, most likely, it's you're not asking enough questions in order to fully understand and build trust with the seller. So think about that. Um, I want you to write this down also. I want you to start studying and looking at what other agents are doing in the marketplace. Maybe even go as far as ask them for help and guidance. And at that point, you're gonna be a student and your business is going to increase. It's gonna be fantastic. So when you do this, you're gonna learn what they're doing and what to implement. And you don't have to do it their way. You can do it your way but you can learn and implement some of the strategies that they've already spent time and money to figure out. When you see their marketing materials, look at the marketing materials. And when you look at the marketing materials, you're like, wow, I really like this piece of that, right? Maybe it's how they're saying sold. Maybe it's how they're showing the list price or not showing the list price on their marketing flyers. Maybe it's their YouTube ads. Maybe it's their Instagram uh, marketing material. Maybe it's their awesome video that they just recorded for a new listing of theirs that's a, a lifestyle video. So think about every aspect of that, but ask and, and ask them for help. A lot of the top producers are glad to help you. They're excited. They wanna be around other excited individuals that wanna list real estate, list and sell real estate. They, they, they want to be around the people that are moving forward and wanting to grow. So think about that.